welcome to um, this week's In Conversation. Um, I'm really excited to have somebody here who is actually from the other side of the world, from, from my point of view. Um, we, we are recording at, at weird times. Um, it's, it's almost late at night here in the UK, um, but for Cymbeline, it's early in the morning because um, my guest today is actually calling and hailing from Australia. So Cymbeline, do you want to say hello? Absolutely, thank you. Yes, um, my name is Cymbeline Bueller. I'm, um, I'm an independent um, artist, mostly working in applied theatre, and I am a PhD candidate at Western Sydney University. Thank you very much. And today, the two of us are going to be talking about how you define practice as research and, and what makes practice as research for you and, and how, you, how you do that and what you plan for the future. So let's kick off with the first kind of question. What is your def definition of practice as research? Um, yeah, this is a, an enormous question in, in a way because it means so many things to so many people. Um, I come from a first career in arts practice. I come from working in theatre, primarily in um, applied theatre, um, but also multi-arts practice. And so for me, um, practice as research is, is really centred in that space where my, uh, my arts practice combines with the research, social research. And... Um, one of the definitions that I have read that I find very useful and, and really um, valuable <clears throat> comes from Carol Gray. And she talks about um, research that is initiated through practice where the, the research question kind of arises out of practice and the methods and methodologies are informed by practice. Um, and, the, and the outputs, the outcomes um, feed back into practice. And so that's um, that really works for me. That's very much um, what I'm what I'm doing um, in terms of the research that I'm doing in my in my PhD. But also as I've been um, working, I've been working on various different projects as research assistant and sort of stepping in in different roles. And um, what I find is that the um, in a sense that definition really centres the practice and um, and. So often it needs to be the research that really is, is centred. And I think more and more I, um, I'm really interested in working towards something that could just as well be described as research as practice, practice as research, where the two really contribute to each other um, to, to, so that both can be expanded and that the, that the whole process, um, you know, is somewhat... Um, one could say at certain moments, okay, this is this is research, okay, this is practice, but much of the time they really intertwined, they're really interwoven. I, I, I totally I totally understand where you're coming from because that's that's basically kind of my definition as well. And in many ways, I would like to rather than call it practice as research, I would like to be able to kind of call it practice equals research equals practice equals research because like you said it's this kind of iterative process between practice and research the feeding back and feeding forward but at the same time um you know it it, it isn't it isn't as it is ease um so mm. it is the, the kind of the yes. equal sign and that that that's really sort yeah. of you know yeah bringing that idea forward um can i just ask you said that your, your practice as research um, comes out of your arts practice as an apply from in applied theatre, and then social research. What what is your social research um, that you're doing at the moment? So what's your research topic, if you like? Yes. So I've been doing. Um, I've been working for a long time for um, close to ten years um, on a transitional justice project in Sri Lanka, collaborating with people from multiple different um, communities, different regions and using theatre as a way to um, meet across difference, across cultural kind of spaces. Um, and the research that I'm doing um, is actually a kind of like a small project within that larger, the larger project is called Theatre of Friendship. And the research that I'm working on at the moment is actually to develop a children's book based on 
those participants' visions for transitional justice in, in their country. So I held um, a series of um, focus groups. Um, we had a big event that involved lots of different activities, theatre activities and different things, but, and, I, and I located these focus groups within that space and um, asked the participants about problems that they're experiencing in their communities, in their lives that they're witnessing, and the, the kind of vision that they have, the solutions that they see for, um, for a pathway forwards. And, um, and so what I'm generating is um, a children's book that communicates the findings that they expressed. Um, so I'm working in consultation with the participants. I'm actually working as a as a writer, as a creative writer in that space, and um, and I have um, worked with them to get ideas to sort of thrash out some of the ideas, and also to get feedback on the on the the writing. That you know, does the story really capture those um, those ideas that they had, and does it um, sort of um, cultural consultation as well, you know, is the story right in terms of its setting there in Sri Lanka? And the idea is for that story to um, become a children's book in um, a multilingual children's book. So it also serves as a, um, a language learning tool. Language is one of the big things that they spoke about as a really important element of moving forwards as a as a unified country and um and then it can really speak to the children um <clears throat> about that vision that vision that the participants hold for a, a future that, that 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 they feel positive about and excited about um and so then that that vision can kind of be communicated to a child audience ideally i suppose before that readership is really aware of the, the, the troubles of a post-war context. That's really exciting. That sounds really exciting. And it sounds like there's a lot of creative work involved because, like you said, you've got workshops um, with um, theatre activities. You're working as a creative writer. Um, you're, you're developing um, that children's book through creative writing in that space. So how do you define your practice usually? Do you, do you when you think about your practice um, you said at the beginning that you've been working as an, an artist in applied theatre. How, how do you describe your practice then? Well, it's um, it's a collaborative practice. Um, so I, um, I mean, sometimes I work independently and sometimes I do other, other projects, but I suppose that the majority, the centre of what I do, it's really about collaborating with communities, collaborating with groups of people, um, always with a, a critical um, intent to address um, to address an issue of, of relevance to that to that group. Um, and um, I use a I use a really wide array of methods of artistic <laughs> methods. Um, and I, I mean I always I've always had a principle of um, form follows function. So, so whatever is needed in that space, um, it might be that um, it might be that in fact, what's really needed is is a process that doesn't actually drive towards a, an artistic outcome. It might be that it's really participatory arts processes that. Um, drive the sort of dialogue that's that's needed um or you you know usually I most of the work I've done um involves a kind of citizen theatre outcomes um where the participants themselves perform the work that um the work that speaks to what's important to them um, I've done a lot of work with personal story and also with oral history um, so, for example, this children's book comes from another project I did with um, Vietnamese elders in um, in Sydney. We have a, a really big um, Vietnamese community here uh, in Australia, and a lot of them don't speak English. The, the people who first came, you know, from Vietnam um, after the war, during and after the war, and I really, um, I really saw how there is this that they make this contribution to Australian culture, but 
we don't necessarily recognise that as a broader society. We tend to see that as being a contribution to the Vietnamese Australian community. You know, that's that's their that's their stories, and that belongs to their community, and that's important to them. And I see that's actually um, a huge, valuable, rich contribution to who we are as Australians. So I was interviewing those elders and I wrote a little children's book based on the stories that they that they told. And um, the, the process that I have been developing, I call it intersubjective fiction. And this is what I'm doing in the, the PhD. Um, and it means that the, the different stories, the different subjectivities that are expressed, um, with, you know, it's really important to listen to those. So the process starts with really making room to hear all of those different stories and for them to respond to each other's stories as well. And then the actual artistic outcome, it doesn't tell those um, biographical stories, but it speaks to the spaces in between the stories. It speaks to the sort of meeting points between the stories. Um, and, um, and then the fiction that comes out of that Sometimes it has details that are very particular, very specific details that came from one particular story or another, um, but it tells a kind of a meeting point between those stories that um, that I always, you know, as a work to try and achieve this sense that those participants can hear their story in that outcome, but also it has a broader reach. It actually speaks to a, a kind of a collective yeah, I mean, it sounds like yeah, absolutely. So it sounds very much like your 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 philosophy behind your practice as research practice um, is about empowerment. It's about em empowering others. Is that is that a fair comment to say? Yes, yes, I would say um, it depends sort of on the on the context. So yes, that's very that's very important. Sometimes it's about um, creating a platform in a way um, for the rest of the society to be able to um, see those that community more, more visibly or in a different light. Um, sometimes it's about creating dialogue between, um, uh, between communities. That project I just was describing um, grew out of a project I did with young people and elders, and that was really about sort of cross-generational dialogue. Yes. Um, and so... In a sense, um, it's always a bit hard to generalise because um, each context, um, is, in a sense, dictates the, the need and it's really important to, um, I think, to be adaptable, to be able to really listen to what people um, want and what people are interested in and what people need and to, and to kind of one comes with a sense of an idea, um, yeah. but as an outsider... Uh, which my work almost always, I'm almost always an outsider. Um, it's very important to be driven by the intentions that they have. So they might um, want to be empowered in a certain way or they might have another another concern that they want to address. It sounds really, I mean, this this is really interesting because it kind of comes home to, 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 to what, what makes practice as research. Um, and and what you're saying is that actually it's yeah is that that fluidity of the process the fact that we don't necessarily know exactly what's going to happen that um, there is this openness um, towards the method to the to the process to 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 the voices that of our participants and that's something that resonates really strongly um, if I'm thinking back to the conversations I've already had with other people. Um, they are all saying that same kind of thing that it actually is about the process. It's not about the outcome, even if, if some in some cases the outcome is beautiful, but it is about trying to kind of engage with the process in in the way that's best suited for that particular situation. And, and it's really interesting to kind of have that conversation, because how do we know? I'm not expecting you to answer that question, but it's, it's you know, we, we have to kind of ask ourselves, well, if that's the case, then how do we know what is the right choice in that particular moment? Are we making the right choices? Um, so it's obviously that kind of element around reflexivity and criticality that you were saying earlier, where you're saying that it's about a critical intent. And I think this is where it comes back to that we have to kind of keep an eye open um, to, to that, you know, is, is, 
is what we do appropriate in the situation that we are applying it? So, mm. yeah, it's really interesting to hear you. I think one of the really useful ways of thinking about this is um, the notion of um, performance sensitive forms of knowledge. Um, you know, in, in research, um, this sort of perform performative um, knowledge actually is, is a, um, a really powerful sort of concept where some of the time we can actually articulate um, findings or knowledge in a way that is very concrete, but some of the time, in fact, it needs to be embodied. Some of the time it's in that space of embodiment, of interaction, of consultation, that, that the knowledge actually is expressed or, or emerges. Um, so in a sense, um, you know, we set out, we set out on a path, and I think this is true of arts practice and of research generally. We sort of set out on a path with a, a, a strong idea, and it needs to adjust, it needs to change, it needs to evolve in response to what we find, in response to um, how, you know, what sort of data we collect, or in response to um, how people respond to the to the provocations that we that we bring. And um, and so much of this um, practice as research is about um, being responsive in those spaces, even where we're not expecting to find, um, you know. Yeah. So it's 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 not it's not just we're not just looking at the data. We're also looking at the the sort of spaces that led into data collection or the sort of interaction between the data and the participants or or whatever it is. Looking into those. Um, those spaces in between and really being available to to respond and to um, adjust the um, the process as it goes. So that's 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 great. I mean, is that the, the kind of the body of literature that you draw on um, around embodiment or performative um, knowledge? Is that you know for your own um, practice as research, or is there a different body of literature altogether that you draw on? You know, which which kind of body of literature do you use to define your work? Yes, I would say um, I am very eclectic. Um, and so, yes, I am very interested in uh, performance ethnography, performance research, um, uh, and um, sort of performative social sciences. Um, and I, um, in terms of the sort of intersubjective fiction, the theorizing of intersubjective fiction, um, I'm, I'm, I'm drawing on um, concepts of dialogicality and, and third space. So this is sort of um, Homi Baba and uh, Mikhail Bakhtin and um, looking at the, um, the sort of how um, these spaces of um, these meeting points can occur, these kind of um, um, spaces of um, spaces that open up where people actually can find some new aspect of themselves or something, some new aspect of their community that is actually in response to each other. The ways that the ways that we um, we shift who we are in response to encounter with the other. Um, and um, yes, and I've been doing quite a lot of um, reading in the space of creative writing as research, which is, I would say, a, a bit of a subset of practice as research. Um, and um, a few of the, um, some of the literature that's been particularly useful there, I've been reading um, Eugene Bacon, who um, talks about how fiction allows us to imbue a sort of a common object with tremendous sort of power in terms of the way that we're communicating with our reader. We can communicate ideas um, with this sort of extraordinary sort of um, impact that um, we don't necessarily need to unpack. Some of the ideas can be communicated very directly without necessarily the sort of, um, I mean, I'm the way I'm working at the moment, I have the fiction and then I also have a very traditional academic text that really does unpack um, much of what I'm wanting to say. Um, but um, Patricia Levy also, yes. um, she talks about how um, 
fiction can create a kind of a space of familiarity so that the reader actually experiences the ideas differently. The reader enters into, we invite the reader into a space um, that's quite different in how they are receiving the ideas. They become involved with the characters and um, and and build um, empathy. Um, Defritus is another another author that talks about the 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 capacity for fiction to open empathy in in a reader, and which means that the ideas actually land very differently. It's um, quite daily. similar. To, sorry, sorry, I didn't want to interrupt, but but it's it's quite similar to what what. Um, Sandra Faulkner um, and Monica Brendergast are saying in terms of, of poetic inquiry. Um, mm -hmm. So their work around poetic inquiry is, is, is also kind of talking about how um, the poetry coming out of research or related to research enables a different view and, and enables people to kind of think things differently. Um, and make an emotional connection where the conventional re research report um, would not have that impact um, at, you know, to kind of create that emotional connection, um, which is kind of the power of, of that kind of work. So, yes, I, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. totally with you on that. Um, it's really quite interesting um, to, to, to hear you also talk about the fact that you are doing both you're doing kind of more conventional traditional work alongside the creative work um, which is what I do as well <laughs> um, because you kind of have to still play the, 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 the rules of the game um, even if you don't necessarily like them all of the time but yeah so when you when you're thinking about all of these things that you you kind of you know contemplating on in terms of practice as research in your view what are the challenges of doing practice as research yeah i think um i think the thing about the challenge is really about it's a, it's a form of walking in two worlds. And so there is a process of translation going on all of the time. And um, one of the things I was thinking about as a sort of a definition of practices research yeah. is this kind of tacit knowledge that would bring, you know, if, if you are an artist coming to research or a researcher coming to arts practice, um, you, you bring this sort of um, body of knowledge and this body of, of practice um, and um, it, it, it operates automatically in a way and I think coming from the arts we tend not to um, show that we often like our, the, our workings to be um, invisible in a way and coming and but coming into research it's really important to show those workings um, and so there's some sort of adaptations there in terms of um, if I'm if I'm in this space and communicating in this space, then I I want to do it in a certain way that's going to work for that audience. And if I'm in this space over here, I want to you know change the way that I present the work, change the way that I communicate about the work. And so it means that there's this constant kind of um, code switching or um, sort of. Uh, Lugon, Lugones talks about world traveling, and I would say, um, as a researcher, I'm as a as a practice researcher, I am kind of constantly world traveling, even within even within a text that I'm writing. This chapter, you know, speaks in this particular to this particular audience, and this chapter knows that that audience is there, but tries to bring them into a different in a different way. This sort of it's a sort of shape shifting, and I think it's the strength of practice research practice as research um, but it's a but it's a challenge it means that there's this sort of extra labor and I feel sometimes I feel like it's twice the work sometimes I feel like the sort of creative aspect um, is actually just a whole extra job on top of the research and in a sense there's um, a risk of almost half the outcome um, I mean the sense that I'm sort of over here, this part of the outcome is visible and over here, this part of the outcome is, is visible. And the challenge is to um, bring them together in a way that um, that means that the, the labour is um, always working towards a larger, something larger, and, and to really make the work visible. 
um, so much literature about practice as research justifies the the value of it or justifies the the what it contributes to um research and i think that's one of the great challenges is to work in a way that doesn't have to have this additional justification or this additional sort of um extra invitation or this extra um this extra sort of work that that um to attract a you know the you sort think- of do you feel it's more difficult to get um, your work recognised amongst artists because it's not art and amongst researchers because it's not research? Yes, I mean, I would say um, absolutely. That's the, that's the sort of risk of having half the outcome, twice the work for half the outcome. However, in another, another way of looking at it is that um, it could be twice the outcome. I mean, it, um, some of the time the outcomes aren't necessarily art. I, I, I really am interested in, dis, in distinguishing between a creative outcome and an, arts, an artistic outcome. And I think the, um, these distinctions are very um, not, not very recognised. They're sort of quite if we think about all the things that practices research means it means different things to different people but we don't really have language yet to differ- differentiate um but i think you know sometimes those outcomes can be of artistic value um just as any other artistic outcome would be and of course there are a lot of um practice as research you know artists who say well what's what's new about um about this playwrights have been researching humanity forever and they and you know that arts practice actually includes this kind of uh, these elements of analysis of um, observation and analysis um just as there are researchers who would say well it's yeah. extremely creative which of course it is so um, I think this is one of the real, really deep challenges is how to find language that actually differentiates um, the, different, the different aspects, the different um, embodiments of practices research. Are you saying that that is how you hope that the field will develop, that we find sort of perhaps more clearer categorizations or, or terminology or language? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That is exactly one. Of, well, it's one of the big things that I am working with at the moment. Um, looking at the difference between identifying the difference between, um, for example, a process and an outcome, um, a creative process um, might actually be of tremendous value for generating a kind of data that you wouldn't generate from a more straight sort of process. Um, So for example, the difference between a focus group, which is just a discussion or a focus group that has elements of creative play. Um, And then um, the differentiation between, as I was saying before, a creative outcome that might involve um, participants exploring an idea, I would think of a creative outcome as something that involves um, creative exploration, creative play, something very, very enjoyable, something very um, that really stays in that very fun space of of creative exploration. And then that outcome is something that's likely to have meaning to the participants and to the researchers, Um, but you wouldn't demand of it that it can communicate to an audience, whereas I would say an artistic outcome um, really considers its audience, speaks to an audience um, and communicates ideas um, in a way that, um, you know, should have meaning, that that, that really call for a a public audience to be able to make meaning. Um, So these sorts of, I mean, there's so many possibilities um, of how arts practice and creative practice can enter into research or... um, or the other way around, and um, I would love I would love to see um, greater you know greater greater sort of differentiation of language to recognise those those different embodiments. That's really interesting. I mean, it it just kind of dawned on me listening to 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 you know kind of your ideal um, you know for development for the future sort of thing. 
um, kind of dawned on me um, that, you, like you're saying, you know, there's a difference between the arts for the art's sake and the art for the research sake. And, and in a way, um, both are trying to obviously create, they are obviously both meaningful, they're both trying to create some kind of reaction. Um, but is the difference between art and, and art as research or practice as research in the fact that the practice as research has got a, a kind of a more academic endeavor behind it, whereas the arts one could potentially just be people's enjoyment you, you know what I mean is yes there's a, a perhaps a call for action involved in 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 the, the art piece in the sculpture in the painting but actually it's not necessarily trying to um, demonstrate particular ways of thinking because it kind of leaves the interpretation open whereas within the practice as research we are hoping that our readers will understand how we have come to the conclusions that we have drawn and that we kind of try and, and help them along that way. Does that make sense? I'm not sure I'm making sense. <laughs> yes, no, it makes sense to me. I would say, um, I mean, I would say that there's, um, there's other possibilities too. For example, I was, um, I was looking at some work of a really interesting um, health academic, um, health researcher in Australia, Catherine Boydell, and she's been developing um, something which she calls, um, she uses art, art as um, knowledge translation. And so um, what she does actually is bring in professional artists to create a work that actually communicates the findings. She's done the research and um, and she's she's found she's she's she has her findings, she's she's reporting on that in an academic, a traditional academic way, and then bringing artists in to communicate those findings in a way that actually speaks to an audience, um, a non-academic audience. Um, and so that kind of knowledge translation um, I think can be found in a lot of practice as research. So I wouldn't call what she's doing practice as research because she's not using that arts practice in the research process. Yes. But I would hazard a guess that that will that that will start to grow. That by doing that, um, there's there will be opportunities. I mean, I would love to see opportunities for greater collaboration. Um, where practice as research might not be done by the one person. It might be that there is a, um, a researcher who seeks out um, an artist or a group of artists who have a particular skill that can be of value in that research. Or similarly, I would love to see artists recognising the value of bringing in researchers who can actually help um, construct methods for investigation that can feed into that artistic outcome. Um, whereas I think at the moment we think of practice as research as being something that happens within one person and we use the resources that we have rather than looking at what is what are the gaps here in the in this research? What could be, what could strengthen this research, what could strengthen this artistic process? Um, and I think there's just such potential for um, for collaboration, for really interesting artistic research collaborations, and also um, sort of experimentation where we push beyond um, the sort of tools that we've got at hand, um, and um, and you know experiment using those using those tools. You know, so much um, so much of what I, I would say practice as research uses what I would call more creative methods. Yes. And, um, you know, and I think researchers have really seen like create, creative practice can um, be so enriching. Um, and, um, you know, and I think similarly on the other side, there's a sort of recognition of some of the sort of notions that come from academia that are being embraced in um, in arts practice and and there's just room for greater understanding across those those lines 
That's a really, really nice line to finish on, actually. It's really, really nice to hear you talk about this. I would like to say thank you so much, Cymbeline, for, for, for having done this today. Um, I really, really appreciate the time that you've taken um, and the fact that you've gotten up early for us as well. Um, anyone who's listening in, um, please do check out the other conversations that are available on the website, on the Bus Brad podcast and, and on the YouTube channel. Um, and um, I hope you all check, check in again at a later stage. And for now, thank you very much, Cymbeline, for, for, for having this conversation with me. It was fantastic. And it's really, really interesting to hear about your practice as research. And I certainly look forward to hearing more about it in the future as well.